What is up people, welcome back to the channel. As I mentioned in the last video, I'm dealing with a little bit of a mobility restriction. I think I have some kind of like rec fem injury. The reason I thought that is because I felt a lot of pain and kind of restriction coming out of the bottom of the hole on the spots, or my hip and my knee. What I've actually kind of discovered is it's not my rec fem because I'm able to do leg extensions fine. However, I have kind of pinpointed what potential could be. So I think it is my tensor fascia lata. Okay, so that's just situated here up on the anterior part of your hip, situated laterally, so to the side. Essentially, I have no internal rotation at like either of my hips. <laughs> I'm gonna get Emma to assess me now and I'm gonna show you what normal internal rotation looks like on a mobile individual and what it looks like on me. What has likely been happening is because I don't have internal rotation, which is pretty necessary for coming out to the bottom of the hole of the squat, other areas have been picking up that force or having to do some little bit of work and overstimulation of that area has potentially led to some degree of kind of strain in my tensor fresh lat, for example, okay? Because if the likes of my glute medius, my glute minimus, they are not necessarily working as they should be, or they're a little bit weak, or a little bit tight, or whatever like that, they could be getting overworked too easily, exceeding their load tolerance, and then things like this popping up. I'm gonna show you exactly how my mobility is now, and I'm gonna go through what I'm doing to hopefully rectify it so I can actually squat properly again. So I'm gonna show you what good internal and external rotation look like. I'm gonna get Emma to lay one leg down flat on the ground, and bring her, her knee up like this. Internal rotation at the hip, if we get Emma's knee to stabilize, get her pelvis to stabilize, and then what we're essentially gonna do is we're gonna try to just get her to control her leg out as far as she can. So her femur is going to be rotating inwards, hence it's called internal rotation. So you can see here, like this, I'm not even really applying much pressure here. That's pretty much Emma just controlling that part. And look how much her actual ankle deviates from the midline here. That's pretty fucking good. Control it out as far as you can. Now look, I am not physio here, right? So this is probably not going to be the perfect assessment. You can see there, she has pretty good internal rotation. Now, let's look at me. That's as much as I can actually get into internal rotation by myself. <laughs> I don't even think that looks like a move on the camera. I don't think so. Okay, now you try to push it in. Oh my god, I don't even have... That's like, as much passively, time. that's how much you can get, get me into it like that. There we go, that's... I don't want to push it Come Coming up like fucking 15 degrees. This side is actually worse and it's not even sore. So, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to control internal rotation here first myself. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, mobile. Okay, okay, now possibly see how much. This is not moving. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is terrible. Active. <laughs> so basically, one of my plans is to every morning when I wake up, I'm going to try to do some little bit of. Hit mobility. Now I've never really done mobility like specifically for any joints because I haven't really felt the need to, but now since this is presenting an issue, I'm definitely going to be doing a little bit more work and a little bit more frequently. What I am going to start off doing is I'm going to be starting off to do some hip circles, just getting on all fours, just with my knees underneath my hips, hands underneath my shoulders, and then with each side at a time, I'm going to get my right leg first. I try to control into as much internal rotation as I can and then just sit into the actual hip itself and start to gyrate. Yeah. So essentially I'm just trying to get some warmth into the actual hip socket itself, get some movement into it, some lubrication. So now that I've done a decent amount of those hip gyrations, hip circles, whatever the fuck you want to call them, I'm going to be doing some Jane Fonda-esque side lying hip abductions. Lying down on my side, have my tibia rotated inwards, trying to get a little bit more activation through my glute meat and my glute mid. And then just lying down on my side, trying up as far as I can, and down. So the abductor muscles are actually something that I very much have neglected. I would be pretty fond of doing adduction when I'm in the gym to get more meatier ties, but obviously not working on them has not really been too kind to my hips. The next exercise I'm gonna be adding in is just abandoned monster walks. Putting these just around my feet, loop this around my head. Then I'm gonna try to keep my toes pointed straight inwards. And then just from here, I'm gonna be taking a big step out to the left and then back in. Push out with the lead foot. Then think about sliding in with the non-working leg. 
I'm gonna try and think about getting some adductor activation in here as I'm sliding this leg in. So I'll do a little bit of a retest of seeing what my mobility is like after warming up the areas and getting a little bit of blood flow in. I think that looks better. Three, two, one. Oh my goodness, there's still quite a bit there. This is gonna require some work. <laughs> the thing with it as well is that it is not necessarily a huge amount of pain that I'm in as such. It's more so just like an uncomfortable feeling. So say for example, I'm sitting now in the bottom of a squat and it's more so when I'm trying to actually come up that it is kind of a little bit irritating and it feels like I don't really have much power in that bottom position. So it's definitely something that I'm probably gonna get looked at now over the coming few weeks. As opposed to just assessing it and trying to cure it myself because ultimately at the end of the day it's going to be much easier if I see a physician and get somebody with professional eyes to look at it as opposed to doing what I think is going to be best because with this stuff like injury rehabilitation it's similar to training right you need some accountability there you need some expert, expert guidance like you can look at whatever you want on the likes of YouTube or like you know physiopedia and try to cure yourself however you may not necessarily be going in the right direction and if you spend a lot of time just going like you know, one degree off course every single day that will add up so i want to get to be able to squat as best i can as quick as i can so realistically i'll probably do this over the course of the next few days see how that works out and then get in contact with the physician so here we go this is training at 11 weeks out and this was from my Thursday deadlift session, so 265 for my top single, and it moved not like I expected it to. Grip started to slip there as well, so I made the very silly decision to uh, try it again. Now, this was a case of me letting my ego or my emotions guide my decision making versus actually following the program. So the program called for single eight so i'm meant to be working up to a single that is meant to be like an opener and as you can see there that is uh, definitely not an opener more like a second attempt and really i should have known that the weight was going to feel like that given how my warmth felt okay however i wanted to move up from the week prior and I just made a bad training decision, right? And these bad training sessions do happen or days where you feel a little bit weaker, they do happen. And <clears throat> when it does come to training for strength, like we do have RPE and RIR targets that we can abide by to help us auto-regulate the load so we can still get a good training session in that day. And that is what auto-regulation and that is what RPE is there for. It is to account for the inter-day variability between how your performance can be. And anytime you have a session which is not necessarily going well for you or you're feeling weaker on a given day, like you can backtrace your steps to a certain degree to pinpoint like what may have led to that session. So you can assess what your sleep was like the night before. How was your nutrition the night before? Did you eat any differently on that day? How is your hydration status? Are you training at a different time? Were you a little bit stressed? Did you just come in from a tougher day of work than you were used to? And I know, for example, for myself, on that day, I pushed my Tuesday deadlifts harder than I supposed to. So my Tuesday deadlift session does include some double pause deadlifts as well as some deficit deadlifts. Now, that does sound like a pretty grueling workout. However, I'm not necessarily meant to be pushing it because it's almost meant to be like a primer session for my heavy deadlifts on the Thursday. Now, I didn't do that. I pushed my deficit deadlifts a little bit too hard. I remember on my last rep of one of the sets, I pretty much pushed it to, yeah, to my limit. And that obviously fucked me up for my, ter for my Thursday deadlift session, right? So this is a lesson for me to learn to say, yeah, maybe in the future, let's not push that session too hard. Keep your secondary day as the secondary day and focus on the primary day. Keep your resources for that session. All right, so bad sessions happen, whatever. We can just put them behind us and move forward. And it's easy for me to also say this because I'm recording this like almost a week later. And But I can tell you at the time, I almost felt like leaving the gym. And I don't often feel like that. I don't often have bad sessions like that 
but since coming back from prep my progress on my spd has been pretty much linear so i haven't really had many bad sessions like that to happen so i haven't encountered that feeling in a long time and while that may sound so silly that it's like oh you thought you were gonna leave the gym after having a bad deadlift and yeah like the reason for that is like i hold myself to a relatively high standard like the standard i hold myself to is the standard of the weight class that i compete in because at at this stage i want to be competitive in powerlifting i don't want to just be going to meets and building a total like obviously building this total is the goal and you know pushing past 700 like you know that is the main kind of thing but when i go to meets i want to be up there i want to be in the mix because that is what kind of excites me it excites me being around people training it excites me having some kind of competitive edge played sports in my life so i want to have that kind of feeling as opposed to just going in there showing up and uh you know not even really being taken notice so i need to hold myself to that standard so from my perspective having those kind of feelings that kind of pushes me further right because i don't want to have that feeling again so that means in the future what i will try to do what i'll try to do because i can't be perfect is i'll try to make better training decisions i'll keep that kind of longer term vision in mind i don't necessarily want to be going into the gym and having that feeling i can avoid that feeling by being smarter with my auto with my auto regulation with my load selection if the weight isn't there don't load it okay it will be there in the future because it's all about the long-term trend when it does come to training it's not necessarily about what the weight on the bar is on that day it's about what is on the bar in six months time in a year time right i think that's one thing that we can get very in our heads about when it does come to strength training it's that particular session that one session is not making you much stronger it is the accumulation of training sessions over blocks and blocks and if your ego gets in the way of you every single time that you're training and you're pushing yourself to your absolute limit you're failing reps you're picking poor loads for the sets that you're about to do that just may mean that you need to deload more often deloading more often less time training less volume being accumulated less progress being made so it's really important to be able to catch yourself in these moments and say you know what i fucked up but now going forward i'm gonna do better and that is my kind of message for today if you're making mistakes take stock reevaluate and let's move forward okay that's it hope you enjoyed my rant and i'll talk to you next week